So welcome to BMC Discovery. The only thing I've done is I've logged into the appliance. So nothing else has, no other action has been taken. When I log into the appliance, we use very detailed role-based access control. When I log in, I see my dashboard that I want that I want to go to. So just to show you here real quick, we have a list of out-of-the-box dashboards. For the most part, they are persona-based. So depending on what your job role is, you're going to have different reporting requirements. You're going to have different uh, asset requirements. You're going to want to see different applications mapped and things like that. So we have all these different dashboards built out. I personally start with my credentials with the baseline dashboard. And within this baseline dashboard, it just gives me a administrative view across all of my data centers. So what do I have and how and you know I can have the ability to drill down into it. So under infrastructure summary, you can see all the different uh, containers that we group things into. So our hosts, our clusters, our containers, network devices, printers, the list goes on, on and on as you, as you can see right there. So we can go drill down into any of that information. We do have automatic grouping and we can do manual grouping as well. So if you want to group uh, devices and applications together into particular groups, we can set that up for you right here. And then as we go down, I'm going to start getting some uh, basic graphs and reports that I can drill down into. The one key thing that I want you to understand is that even the graphs here are active live graphs. I can click on any piece here and it will take me into the report for that uh, chunk of the graph. So you can see software products by publisher, our host OS distribution, uh, you know, our OS class counts, physical versus virtual, number of network connections, and so on. But any single piece of this, I can drill down on. So I can see I have 207, um, you know, copies of Apache out there on my network. I can just click on that. And then what it's going to do is give me a list of all my Apache information. So it's all right there at my fingertips. Again, very easy to get to any type of information. If we want to drill down into a particular host, obviously we can. what you would normally do if you're looking for one specific host is you would just do a search for that host. Or we can drill down into the host itself. We can look for it. Or if we have them by containers or anything like that, easy to drill down. At the top here, you can see I have different actions that I can take. Uh, they become live, actually, when I select a particular host or group of hosts. The other thing we can do is we have reports available to us. And then we can look at it from, and model that uh, single device and what it's connected to, or we can just look at it from an asset management perspective. And that's really where I want to start today is we can just, it really doesn't matter. I'm just going to pick a Windows box. We'll look at a Windows and a uh, Unix-based box. So let's look at this Windows box right here out of our Austin data center here at BMC. So the first thing that it's telling me is my name. I can actually create a host profile if I want to. And then it's a Windows server. My hardware vendor is sitting on a physical Dell server. I can see that it's communicating with one host. I can drill down into that if I want. I have eight software instances related. And you can see if I have any additional identity information, such as my domain type information. And then we start diving down into the operating system. Um, you know, it's obviously Windows, what OS version, what edition, what build, and so on. Then we get down into our patches. If we want to drill down into what patches are actually installed on this box, we can, and what packages are related to that on that host. Now, here's where we get into that OS support details. As I mentioned earlier, we get that retirement date or end of life, end of support date, and end of extended support date. So we can see we're running Windows 2008. Microsoft end of life that a long time ago. Their end of support was on, you know, basically, you know, in January 13, 2015. But it is being supported for extended support uh, for three more years. The catch is, uh, as you all most likely know, when you want that extended support, it costs big dollars. They want uh, you know additional contracting and things in place to do that support, and then even then that support is minimal as far as uh, patching and fixing only, not new enhancements. So being able to run these reports is very powerful. So we know where you know what our box name is. We know it's a Windows box and a little bit of information about it. Now what about our hardware? So we can see this is a Dell PowerEdge R310. 
We can see our serial numbers and information. We can see how much RAM we physical and logical RAM we have. And we're you know what our rack unit size is. Here's our power capacity information, our BTUs per hour, that type of uh, hardware information I mentioned earlier. And then we're going to go into getting all of our IP addresses and MAC addresses and interface. Now, this will actually drill down into every single interface. So you can see it's showing me my primary right now. If I want to drill down into all the others, I can. This guy doesn't have any HBAs detected, so we're not going to be connected to a um, NAS or a SAN in this case, but we'll go through and make sure we show you some of those. So we're just looking at our local disks. So we can see it has two disks, the zero disk one, and all of our information, and then going down and drilling into that file system. So that's just a typical Windows host that's out there on the environment. Let's just go through and grab a Red Hat box, again, just at random here. And we're getting the same type of information for the operating system. This just happens to be a Red Hat Enterprise Linux box. Uh, we're going through, and you can see it's now an IBM E server instead of a Dell server. Same type of information. We can see all of our adapter information, but this guy does have a fiber channel HBA, and we can start drilling down into what it's connected to, all of our uh, file systems and uh, for that device, and all of our disks and storage volumes. So very easy to get all the detailed information. Now, one thing I will note, just because you don't see it here does not mean we don't collect the data. Uh, you can actually change what bits of information is on these different views. So if you need more or less information, uh, we can uh, create that and get that done for you. So if we go back to home, we've, now, we've looked at a couple of systems. Let's just take a look at what we would see see if we were looking for, where is it at, a storage system. So now you're looking at all of our SANs in the environment. So you can see we, you know, Clarion, NetApp, uh, you know, IBM, you name it, we have it somewhere. So we can drill down on any one of these. Uh, let's just take a look at our NetApps by chance. It's a self-contained NAS. And then we can start seeing all the information. So you can see it has 48 disk drives related. Our file systems, we have 12. So again, just because you're not seeing it doesn't mean we can't just click on the box and get all of our very detailed type information about all the, uh, the drives, all the lines, everything that we have within those devices. And again, you drill down into anything else just like you've been, like you've been seeing. So I want to show you a couple other dashboards real quick before we start talking a little bit about modeling. So I mentioned earlier that these are persona-based. So let's just say we can go look at a you know, storage overview. And the one thing I will show you is you can see this overview, this is the original storage overview. This one has a little X next to it. This is something that we've made. So you have built-in dashboards, but you can copy any existing dashboard. And these are just widgets, if you will. And you can change any bit of information that's in any of these to create your own custom dashboards. So what I want to do is let's look at software products lifecycle analysis. So I'm now looking at software by, by category. I'm looking at software by publisher. And then I'm looking at my software risk. So when I'm looking at this, I can see, you know, when my in, what's end of life, when things are end of life, when they're end, end of extended support, uh, end of support. What worries me here in this particular graph, end of extended expo support exceeded 463 different things. That means we have 463 pieces of software running in our data centers that is not supported, period, by the vendor whether we have an extended contract or not. So what we want to do is start drilling down into that stuff. Obviously, a lot of this stuff is BMC software because we still test with older versions. But you can go through, and, you know, Oracle Database uh, 10G Release 2, things like that. But now I know and have a list of what's in my environment that I need to work on getting rid of. So this is my hit list from a data center manager as well as a security manager when I'm looking at what my risk and security footprint is uh, for my data center itself. 
So again, all these different dashboards, uh, let's just take a look at a different one just so you can get an idea, a couple ideas. Let's look at our storage overview. And then we'll look at our virtualization and move on. So again, now we're looking at you know st storage systems by vendor type, what our storage volumes are. Obviously, we are a major Hitachi shop. We've got some others, but most of it's on Hitachi. And then we have all different kinds of reports over here that we can run and generate about our storage devices. So very easy to, easy to do that. And last but not least, because I know it pertains to almost everyone if on the call, if not everyone, is virtualization. So we can look at our Windows virtualization, our Unix virtualization, our virtualization technologies, and then all the different reports that we can run. So out of the box, I think, I don't, I don't quote me on the number, but I think there's a little over 100 out-of-the-box reports within BMC Discovery uh, across the board for all the different technologies. Now, what I want to do next is take you into the modeling. So when we start talking about modeling, we're going to do an application model. And I want to show you how that Start Anywhere mapping works. So you can see I have some stuff that's, uh, you know, some models, the one that's not published, and we've got some cam, old CAM stuff and some other stuff. But what I actually want to do is I want to do some models from scratch. So I'm going to do two. One of them is going to be a pretty simple example. One of them is going to be a little bit more complex. So remember, when I said the Start Anywhere application modeling, all you need is a little bit of information to give the system something to go off of. In this case, I want to map out a Remedy environment. So we're just going to say Remedy. I, I'm not telling it what, sys, what server, what system, anything like that. I'm just telling it I want to map out Remedy. Now, what that search did is it looked for Remedy, and it's giving me two sets of results. Um, basically, right here, these are our most relevant results, and this is just everything else, the NORs on the network that may pertain to those most relevant results. Obviously, we're going to want to start with the most relevant results. I want to start off with a software instance in this case. I want to look for Remedy. So, when I look at my software instance, here's my software instances, and I can come through and take a look and see, you know, what's going on. I'm going to go off of my Prado one. I'm just going to select this guy right here as my seed for mapping out my Remedy environment. So it's giving me all my information about that, that device that I just selected. So here's Remedy, all its versions, everything, its type, everything like that. But more importantly, I want to click on Visualize Model. And I want to change the layout to what the default layout is. We're going to go to a force-directed layout. So this is the new layout that if some of you have worked with uh, BMC modeling before, uh, is new, was, or I say you saw bits and pieces of this in the previous version, version 10. Now this is our standard modeling layout. And what you're seeing here is all the different components based on just that one Remedy component. You can now see, I can see my, I've got BMC ADD M10 here connected to all my AR systems. So I really have two different environments here. I've got our ADD M or BMC discovery environment, which is right here. And I've got my Remedy environment over here. So I want to clean this up a little bit before I, uh, go through and do this. I'm actually, just for clarity purposes, I'm going to start removing some of my load balancer stuff. Uh, let's see. I'm going to leave the rest of that in there. All right, so we got a little bit cleaner. Now, I said I wanted to model Remedy. I did not want to model our BMC Discovery or ADDM. So how do I go through and do that? I take this from drag mode, and what drag mode is, as you saw earlier, I can grab anywhere and start moving things and start moving things around. And obviously, I can zoom in and out. But in this case, I want to go into select mode. So I'm going to take my mouse, and I'm using a laptop mouse here. So excuse me while I'm talking on the phone doing this. And I'm just going to make a big circle around the remedy stuff. 